and welcome to another edition of Attack Wrap. Zach Scribner, Adrian Musso, joined by two netminders this week, Carter George, Corbin Votary. Guys, thanks for joining us. Looking forward to the episode. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Adrian, there's a lot to go over. The NHL Central scouting list was revealed today, the uh, preliminary list, and there's a member of the Owen Sound Attack, familiar name to all of us. He was ranked as an A prospect Who's alongside uh, two other guys. You might have heard of him, some Colby Barlow guy. Oh, never heard of him. Let's take a look at it there. You see it there. Uh, so Colby was the lone Owen Sound Attack member on the list this year. Uh, he's ranked as an A prospect. You can see the stats there, seven goals, five assists for 12 points. Uh, tied for the team scoring lead. We'll get to that a little bit later. That plus 11, Colby will be happy about that as well. Uh, two other OHL members named as an A uh, prospect in Cam Allen of the Guelph Storm and Callum Ritchie. Adrian, we're going to see the Guelph Storm for the first time this Saturday. Uh, I believe OHL Rookie of the Year last year was Cam Allen. And we're going to get to see Cal Ritchie later on in the year. What do you make of the uh, the three A prospects? Honestly, it's no surprise when you look at those three names and you get A-rated A prospects. They're all going to be drafted in the first round. More than likely top 15 for all three of them. Cam Allen is a dynamic puck-moving defenseman that plays physical. Callum Ritchie is a goal-scoring uh, threat for the Oshawa Generals, and we see it every single day at the Bay Shore with Ka Colby Barlow. The guy just puts the puck in the back of the net. He has an elite shot, NHL caliber shot already. All three well-deserving of A-rated prospects in Central Scouting's most recent. I was going to say, uh, these, these two guys uh, for sure know all about Colby Barlow's mm -hmm. shot. So like Adrian mentioned, A-rated, it doesn't mean that they're going to be for sure first-round draft picks, but it's looking that way. Uh, I believe there was about six to seven OHL players that were named as a, uh, a B-rated prospect in terms of Central Scouting. You see the list there, Bo Aiki, Oliver Bonk, Hunter Brustevich is going to be a stud for the Kitchener Rangers this year. Adrian, uh, some names that stick out there as B-rated prospects as well. Yeah, for me, it's Carson Rakoff of the Kitchener mm -hmm. Rangers. He's got that power forward to him. He's got a great shot, and he's a very smart hockey player. I also like, like you said, Hunter Buskevich, puck-moving defenseman for the Kitchener Rangers. One surprise on that list for me, though, is Quinton Musty of the Sudbury Wolves, mm -hmm. former, former first overall pick in the OHL. It's kind of fine, and he found his way with the U.S. team this past summer at the uh, Helenka Gretzky Cup, really drove the offense. So I'll, I see him as a late first-round pick that could be a steal for a lot of teams. It is early. It, after all, it is just the, uh, the preliminary rankings, though. Overall, 47 OHL players did find their name on that list. I mentioned Colby, the lone member from the Owen Sound Attack. And uh, especially the first and second round, third round guys, they're going to get a, get a, have a trip to Nashville June 28th and 29th. They are hosting the NHL draft this year. Let's move on now to the Owen Sound Attacks Player of the Week. It's Denny Gour. Denny had three goals and he added an assist over the last three games for Owen Sound. He also contributed on the penalty kill for the attack. Went 13 for 14 last week. Just one power play goal allowed in those three games. Looking at it before the show, Owen Sound's PK now up to the eighth spot in the Ontario Hockey League. Really big jump. Uh, what did you see out of Denny? We got to see him at home on Wednesday in two road games. Yeah, Denny's being the leader that he needs to be this year. He, he finally take the step as an older guy on the team. We talked to him just last week or two weeks ago Let's now, go. and he's ready and primed for that um, to be the leader on the offense. And we talked to him about his plus minus, <laughs> and he jokes about it, but he really takes it to heart. He wants to be that defensively reliable player for uh, Coach Walters and his staff, and he wants to show the young guys that if I can buy in, anybody can buy into the system. They need him to be that driving force, and he's being exactly that. When he pitches in on the offense, he says he wants to score 30 plus goals. I don't see why he can't. As a uh Adrian, yourself being a Montreal Canadiens fan, you were happy to see the OHL Player of the Week coming from the Mississauga Steelheads in Owen Beck. He had a strong showing in these past two games. He tied a Steelheads record for most points in a single game on Friday, recording one goal and five assists in an 8-2 win over Hamilton Friday night. He continued a strong play on Saturday in Barrie, registering two goals and an assist as the Steelheads fell short to the Barrie Colts in a 6-5 loss. Hey. Montreal just knows how to draft him. Cedric Gando, Owen Beck, 33rd overall in the most recent NHL draft. 
He's going to be a stud for the Habs for a long time. Colin McKenzie of the Ottawa 67s earns OHL Goaltender of the Week. He had two victories, a .60 goals against average and a 976 save percentage, helping Ottawa continue its run of undefeated hockey to begin this season. Just to note, and we'll get these guys' slots on this just after, McKenzie took the crease Friday in Sault Ste. Marie, stopping 21 of 22 shots that came his way, normal for a hockey game. He turned aside an OHL record, 15 consecutive Greyhound shootouts attempt, and a 2-1 67 win over the Sioux Greyhounds. When you two as goaltenders hear 15 shootout attempts, and he stopped all 15, what goes through your head? Yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot of rounds for a shootout. I, oh, that's something uh, I want to do. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive, I think. Uh, 15 in a row. That's, 15, that's... And they still couldn't figure him out. That's pretty impressive, that I impressive. think. That is impressive. Anyways, uh, we'll get to talking about specifically with Carter about shootouts in just a little while. Now let's get you caught up at the Western Conference standings. Uh, ranked 8th in the latest CHL Top 10, the Windsor Spitfires sit atop the conference with 15 points. They still haven't lost in regulation this season. The Spits are three points ahead of Owen Sound, who continue to lead the Midwest Division. Saginaw and Sarnia are tied for third with 11 points, just one point ahead of Flint and the Erie Otters. The Sioux Greyhounds are ranked seventh with eight points, one ahead of the London Knights, who are in eighth. The Kitchener Rangers are ninth with six points, two ahead of the Guelph Storm, who are last with four points. A uh, rare Tuesday game in the Ontario Hockey League tonight between the Storm and the Rangers. We'll try to keep you updated throughout the evening there. Now let's turn over to the Eastern Conference standings. I mentioned it, the Ottawa 67s. Credit to them, undefeated to start the season, a perfect 9-0. They were ranked fifth in the latest CHL Top 10 today. The Mississauga Steelheads pick up an honorable mention. They are second with 14 points. Tied for third are Kingston, who we'll see Sunday here in Owen Sound, and the Peterborough Peets with 13 points. Just five points separate fifth from 10th place in the Eastern Conference. Barry is fifth with 11 points, one ahead of North Bay. The Gens are in seventh with nine points, one ahead of Niagara. Sudbury is ninth with seven points. That's one point ahead of the defending OHL champion Hamilton Bull Bulldogs, last in the Eastern Conference with six points. Let's now take a look at the OHL top 10 in scoring. Toronto Maple Leaf prospect Ty Voigt of the Sting leads the way with 21 points on the year. Voigt recorded eight points for Sarnia over the weekend, including a four assist game versus Niagara Saturday evening. Captain of the Flint Firebirds, Brendan Othman, is second with 17 points. He's two ahead of Tucker Robertson and Pavel Minchikov. A new name there, an exceptional one to the top 10 in scoring so far that we've seen this season, Michael Misa. You see him there, tied for fifth with five goals in his last three games. He jumps into the top 10 with 14 points. He's tied with Nolan Burke of the Sarnia Sting for fifth. And you see it there, a bunch of players tied six to 10 with 13 points. They run out the top 10. To Owen Sound's top 10 in scoring, line mates Colby Barlow and Seti Gaindon are tied for the top spot with 12 points. Denny Gore and Ethan Burroughs each have nine points on the year, leaving them third and fourth. That's one point ahead of Matthew Pappas and Servak Petrovsky. Ever since coming from the Niagara Ice Dogs, Pappas has four goals and three assists. Sam Sedley had a two-goal game last week. He's seventh in team scoring. That's one point ahead of Gavin Bryant. Cal Ewins and Nolan Seed ran out the top ten with four points. And just to note there, Cal Ewins scoring his first goal of the season this past weekend versus the Erie Otters. Now, guys, we'll start off the show with a little light question for you. Halloween is just a week away, about six days away. What are you guys going to dress up as, and what was your favorite costume as a kid? Yeah, uh, as a kid, I always liked the Joker. Uh, you know, it could still be a favorite costume uh, for my age, too, but you know, a lot of the guys uh, going as Trailer Park Boys this year. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm dressing up as, as J-Rock. There you go. Uh, for me, I, as a kid, I always liked the Scream costumes, where you could uh, pump the blood into your uh, mask there and you'd uh, scare some people. I always love those. Um, I think this year, a couple of the boys are going as cowboys. I'll probably join them too. Uh, I love dressing up, and I think it's always fun to dress up too. Yeah. Very good. Before we talk hockey, did you guys get up to anything cool this summer? Uh, me and a few of the guys went to a Metallica concert, so that was, uh, that was my first concert I've ever been to. So. Uh, Pretty great one to yeah, see. Wait, what yeah, what a concert. first concert. Where was that? that? Roger Center? Uh, it was in Buffalo. Buffalo. Uh, the Bills. Uh, yeah, yeah. New, New era. So. Field. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, yeah. Carter? Uh, I go with the buddies all summer while I could before I moved down here. So I go with them a lot at their uh, cottages and lake houses and have a fun summer with them. 
Uh, first off, welcome to the city of Owen Sound, your first episode of Attack Rap. How have you been uh, enjoying Owen Sound ever since coming over? I love it. It uh, reminds me of Thunder Bay a lot with the small town feel, and everyone's so welcoming here and so nice, and I, I love it. Now, Carter, in your U16, U16 season, you said it just there, you're from Thunder Bay, so you're playing for the Thunder Bay Kings. Uh, and in the G GTHL, so the Greater Toronto Hockey League, Thunder Bay is flying in every other weekend. Is that how it worked? Uh, every other weekend before COVID kind of shut us down for a little bit there. But yeah, every other weekend we'd fly down. How is that experience playing against the best of the best and what they, what they say is the best uh, minor hockey um, system? It's great. You get to see some of these top uh, picks in the draft. You get to see all these high-skilled players. And going into it, like, we didn't really know very many people and, like, very many of these players. And then you watch them and you're like, wow, these, these kids are pretty good. And it's amazing being able to play against them. And it's pretty cool, I think. Now, one of those teams and one of those players is Antonio Terracini, who played for the <laughs> Toronto Junior Canadians. What was it like playing against that powerhouse of a team? It was always a struggle. If you knew you are playing them, you know that you're going to have a tough night, usually. Um, but you always have, it, have in your head that maybe you could pull off an upset and maybe win one of those games. So you always have, always have to have like confidence going into those games. And you always knew those teams always had those top stars like Tursini and some of those kind of guys. So yeah, it was pretty cool, I think, playing them. I mentioned his name there. He just jumps into the top 10 in scoring. Not every goaltender in their U16 season gets to go up against uh, an exceptional player in Michael Misa, um, breaking Connor McDavid's record in the uh, the OHL Cup. What did you see from, we haven't seen him here in Owen Sound yet, um, what did you see from Michael Misa? A lot of goals, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> you may have put a hat trick on me. Um, he scores a lot of goals, creates a lot of offense. He's a super skilled player and has an IQ of a pro hockey player. He's really good and really skilled. And he has a bright future, I think. Now, uh, let's go back to draft day, um, selected by the Owen Sound Attack. Where were you and uh, who did you have around you? So I was with our U18 team. I got called up with them to go to their West Regionals for TELUS Cup. And we were in a Boston pizza and we were all watching the draft, waiting, sitting on our phones, waiting to see if anyone got drafted. And I got the call from Dale and I walked outside and he said, welcome aboard, kid. And it was a pretty, pretty special moment because when I walked back in, I got a round of applause from everyone there. It was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I assume you were the first uh, player selected out of everyone that you were with as well? Yeah. And then the following morning, my buddy, Nicholas Olney, yeah. got drafted to the Erie Otters. Um, how much contact or any meetings probably over Zoom being with Thunder Bay. <laughs> Did you have with Owen Sound leading up uh, to the draft? Uh, I, I think it was a phone call, I believe, and we, uh, I had a good conversation with Sean Lafortune. He's a very intelligent guy, and I enjoyed having a conversation with him. Um, and he was really interested, and I was really interested too, and it was a good match, I think. Now, we had Dale on the uh, first week or so of Attack Rap, and he mentioned that you were his number one goalie prospect out of any goalie in the U16 season. When you hear that, just what do you make of that? Uh, I'm honored. I mean, hearing that you're number one out of all the kids your age in Ontario is pretty special to me. Um, and hear, hear it from Dale too, the GM here, it's, it means even more to me. I honor it and try and be humble about it as much as possible. Now, four goalies uh, were picked before yourself. Does that add fuel to the fire a little bit for yourself? I'll definitely have some more fuel when I play them. Um, <laughs> I'll definitely want to do as much as I can to uh, be as good as them or just play to their level because there's some pretty good goalies that went before me and those four are pretty good, I'd say. Now for the both of you, this next question. Everybody says goalies are a little weird. <laughs> I, I, I'm a... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, they, might, they might get you while yeah, they're done the show. Yeah, be exactly. Careful. But uh, what were you guys preparing this summer in order to get ready for this season, like I say, goalies are a little weird, but you guys have to do something different than players, um, obviously, because you guys have different movements and different, you need to be a little bit more flexible than players. What were you guys doing this off season to get prepared for this OHL season? Yeah, to, it's taking care of your body, uh, making sure you're stretching, doing, uh, you know, it's a lot of training in the summer as well, uh, on the ice constantly, making sure your eyes are, you know, you're seeing the puck all summer, because it takes a long time to, you know, to get that feel back. So just a lot of you know, taking care of your body and on the ice. You say there's eye workouts there, and I've heard that from multiple different sources, that goalies actually have to 
you have to train your eyes how to track pucks in. So what are some maybe um, activities that you do to train those eyes? Yeah, every day I get to the rink early. I'm, uh, I'm doing hand-eye coordination just with balls. I'm juggling, uh, just really getting that, you know, getting that sequence down, just tracking it to my hands. Now, last season was your rookie season, Corbin. You uh, played 21 games. What, what did you take away from that rookie season? Yeah, I took in a lot of experience. Like, uh, I think it was a great season. You know, my play uh, throughout the season got progressively better, and you know, I just want to carry that into this year. You started the season as the thir as a third string goalie behind Mac Guzda and then behind Nick Chenard, and then Mac gets traded. You go as the backup goalie on a day to day basis. Do you think that also helped you elevate your game a little bit more, knowing that if Nick goes down, you're the next in line? Yep. Yeah, I was just. Uh, you know, trying to take bits and pieces from both Guzda and, and Chenard's game and, you know, just having that feel is, you know, is good. This past offseason, obviously, you, you strive to get better and better every year. What was one of the main takeaways from last year that you wanted to improve upon? Yeah, I wanted to, you know, last year I feel like my play was, I was a bit too energetic in the crease. I just want to slow things down and be, you know, calm, cool and collected and, this year, I think that's what I've done so far. I have to say that you say that, and that's it's it's fu it's funny you say that because when I was doing the play-by-play -play in the in one of the preseason games against North Bay at home, I noticed exactly that you were a little agitated last season, like you had said, and you look so calm this season. So yeah. your hard work is paying off for sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said. And I, I mentioned it, you're now the backup goalie. Are you excited to push Nick for, there's only one crease. Are you excited yeah. to push him every night? Yeah, there's obviously that, uh, you know, that, you know, that friendly battle you have with him. But, you know, I think we both know, uh, you know, what's best for the team. And we're both pushing each other uh, each and every day. So, you know, I'm really excited for, for what the future holds with us. But, you know, you know I'm always want to take that crease. Now, I, I mentioned it just a little bit ago, you, you played in 21 games. This season, you're going to play in much more, I'm, I'm banking on it. And one of those games is going to be a hometown start, I hope for you, in <laughs> Kingston if all goes well in January. Are you excited for that moment? Oh, yeah. No, I have a lot of family there. I know, like Dad was just talking about it the other day, we're getting box seats. So uh, there's going to be a lot of people there, but no pressure, just... Uh, just another game. Just another hockey game, absolutely. So uh, we mentioned it, Carter. Um, what were you uh, working on in the summer preparing for uh, this big year? You didn't know if you were going to Junior B or to the Ontario Hockey League. Uh, for me, it was physique. Uh, I wanted to get bigger and stronger because these guys in the league are men. So <laughs> I know I need to mature a bit and try and get bigger and stronger, like I said. So that was a big aspect for me. And then while staying on the ice and keeping my conditioning up, and well, like Corbin said, keeping your eyes going because you want to be able to see pucks all the time. So yeah. I hope I'm not taking away a question from what's in the helmet that we're doing later, but you mentioned it. Goalie's a little bit weird. Do you guys think you have any weird superstitions that you do game after game? Maybe a teammate comes up. What are you doing? Yeah, no, I don't. Like, I'm not the superstitious guy. I, I kind of want to be involved with, like, the team and stuff, but, you know, I'm not the typical goalie, you say, so I don't think I have any weird superstitions. I'm kind of like Corbin. I try not to have any superstitions. I try and be a little bit loose on game days, try not to get up too uptight. Um, yeah, I try not to have some you know, like weird superstitions or anything like that. Um, so Adrian mentioned it. Nick, this is Nick's last year. He's at OA goalie. Next year it'll uh, be the two of you um, working together. Uh, what will the two of you be doing the most to bring wins to the Bayshore next season? And another exciting year for the Owen Sound Attack. Yeah, obviously we have a, a skilled team again. A lot of our guys are coming back. Um, you know, we're just. I think we're just going to be preparing in the summer doing everything we can to, you know, push for a championship this upcoming year. Like you said, we'll be pushing each other, trying to be as good as we possibly can, trying to help the team out. And we have a lot of guys coming back, so I think we have a good chance next year too. Now, for yourself, you appeared in uh, two preseason games, playing just shy of 30 minutes in each of those. What were some challenges you found, uh, you mentioned playing against Ben now, from going from that U16 level up against the OHL in uh, the games you played against North Bay and Barrie? I found the biggest thing was bodies, like they're a lot bigger than U16, so when you have screens you really got to look around them, that's a big thing, and uh, the shots are a lot harder, I'd say, a little bit of adjustment you have to make here and there, but all in all, um, if you make the adjustments, you should be fine. 
Now, it was just mentioned uh, last week that Braden Rogers, Ben Comier, and uh, Coach Walters are going to go to the U-17s. So you were able to go this summer. You weren't picked to the team, sadly. But wh what was that experience life in Calgary for yourself? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, being able to go there, some of the top players in Canada and some guys who will probably play in the NHL one day and be pretty damn good. It was pretty cool to play against them and see them in person. Actually, like you can see videos of them online and like see like their highlight reels. But to be able to see them in front of you on ice, it's pretty cool and it's amazing. I think. So, who were some of the toughest challenges then going up against in those practices? Ah, uh, every shot was in the corner and it was definitely <laughs> like posting in every shot. Um, they got some hard shots, quick releases, um, and you have those top picks that are oh, yeah. really stand out. You could tell. Um, now, in the, this season, you played five games uh, in St. Mary's so far. You kept the goals against average under three and the save percentage over 900. What did you make of your experience there in those five games with St. Mary's? Um, I think it was great to uh, get a start to my junior career down there. Um, I think it's a great place. They got a, the, my goalie partner is a former NHL player. He played for the Barry Cole from Taylor Lama. And he's a great mentor to me, and he's showed me the ropes and tried to help me as much as possible to get up to the level of the OHL. Um, and yeah, he's been really good to me, so I, I try and take in as much as I possibly can from him. And a uh, question for the both of you, we'll start out with you, Carter. Uh, your first opportunity, I assume, to work with a, a goalie coach in Red Dog uh, coming up for practice once a week. What has he meant to your development so far this season? Uh, he's meant a lot. I try and take in as much as possible from him. He's a good guy. He's pretty funny, too. Um, teaches me a lot of stuff, a lot of technical stuff, and he's a great goalie coach. Go ahead, Corbin. Pump his tires. What's it been like oh, yeah. with Red Dog so far? Red Dog, he's, uh, you know, he's just like your best friend. He, uh, he's there for you. Uh, and on top of that, he's, you know, he's always working with you for, with, the, with the hockey side of things as well. Now, you guys both come in as the go-to guy for your U16 team, for the Quinty Red Devils, for the Thunder Bay Kings, and then you're a backup goalie. What's the biggest difference to becoming a good backup goalie? Corby, we'll start with you. You've had two years of this. Yeah, I think, you know, you're always, you're always that guy, right? And, uh, you know, in your, you know, minor midget season, say, um, you know, being a backup now, it's, you know, just sticking with things, just keeping working hard, and, you know, hopefully it all pays off. So, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of tough being able to, Going from the guy that like the number one guy to being the backup, it's a little tough and challenging. Could be frustrating at times, but mm -hmm. you just have to push yourself as much as you can to try and take over that role. And it gives you feel to like push for something, um, try and achieve a goal, to try and get that crease back. Two up, I was gonna say two upcoming home games for the Owen Sound Attack this week: Saturday night versus the Guelph Storm, Sunday versus the Kingston Frontenacs. Let's throw out our first trivia question, Adrian. You got this one: a pair of tickets versus the Guelph Storm. Yeah, so two former, uh, oh, different question. We have two sets of tickets. So what team did Corbin Vordery get his first OHL win against? This is for tickets against the Guelph Storm. So what team did Corbin Vordery get his first OHL win against? Corbin, don't tell them. I was going to say, let's throw back to that night, but don't reveal the yeah, team. Yeah, do you remember that night? I do remember that night. Um, you know, I played a couple games before then. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, didn't get the outcome I wanted, but you know, I, I came into that game just like it was any other, uh, you know, hoping for the win, so. Where's the puck? Uh, it's at home. <laughs> home back home. In yeah, home, home, home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's talk about this season's first, first win. You, it was against the Windsor Spitfires just a few weeks ago. A back and forth affair, a 5-4 win in overtime. Colby Barlow with the heroics on that night. Uh, do you enjoy those back and forth games, or do you like quiet nights in the crease? No, I, I like. Uh, I definitely like a lot of shots. Uh, I like games when you're active all the time. You know, I, you don't get those cool legs like uh, like I had a lot of the time, and you know, minor midget because we had such a great team then. But you know, I, I like uh, getting a lot of shots, and you know, I really enjoyed playing in that game. One of the guys that was a hero on that night for the Windsor Spit Spitfires on their end was Matthew Maggio. Uh, a New York Islanders prospect. When you see a guy that's been drafted to the NHL, and he's been drafted to the NHL because he's an offensive force coming down the wing, what, what are the thoughts that go through your head? He's not going to be the only one that you see this season coming down on you, so what goes through your mind in, st uh, in order to stay in, in check for that one-on-one? Uh, that -on -one? Yeah, obviously, like, 
you think about it before uh, for the game and who their top players are. But you know, when when you get in the net, things start to settle down. You really really don't know who's coming at you. You're just trying to stop the puck. But you know, you know the guys like that. They're they're very skilled and talented and can put the puck where wherever they want. So you just have to be ready at all times. Um, but we only have about a few minutes before we go for break. Just uh, is there a goaltender that you like going up against on the other side of the end in the OHL the most? Uh, not particularly. Um, you know, I like I like going against the the big name guys that you know have have to, like shown themselves in this league. Uh, you know, I just want to compete against them and improve myself. Um, we I mentioned it. We only have a few minutes for break. Let's talk about these warm up jerseys this season. Fantastic. No other team has done something like it from the MLB Players Weekend. I want to start out with yours. You come into the Bay Shore last Wednesday against the London Knights. Carts gold. Where does that come from? <laughs> this was kind of a funny story. When I was uh, when I was young, I think it was around six, I uh, made my Instagram and I wanted it to be Carter George or something like that and it wouldn't work. So it suggested names and it was Carts gold. So I used it, stuck with it, and uh, everyone from Thunder Bay stuck with it and calls me Cards Gold, so that was kind of the nickname that I just stuck with. And then Corbin, yourself, you go with the pretty original votes <laughs> yep. for uh, normal reasons, I would say. Yeah, just because my last name. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, like in minor midget, like my whole team called me co uh, votes and, and mostly my coach. It's pretty cool now. You got it on one side on the mask and then the other side, the back of the jersey. Uh, speaking of, a lot of Really, what were some of your favorites across the uh, across the room? I like uh, Bird Daddy. It's, it's <laughs> pretty bird, yeah. 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 I'm a big fan of uh, Menace. Menace, Menace for Denny Gore. Yeah. yeah, Dennis the Menace. Yeah, we had what was it, Denny on a few weeks ago, and I believe Colby and Cedar said it as well. Dad of the team, Ethan Burroughs. <laughs> where did where did all that come from? Where did, what responsibility does he take in that? No, oh, he just has a. Uh, you know, a dad figure. He's just <laughs> always like, you know, he, he knows, like, I, one of the things I noticed in the, in the room, like, I can't throw a football for my life. And, you know, you look at dads and, you know, they just know how to throw a football, you know? So, and that's him, so. Uh, like I mentioned, we only have about 30 seconds for break. So on the other side of the break, the Owens on Attack played three hockey games last week, once against the London Knights, and they made their first trip to Erie, Pennsylvania. We'll have highlights from all three of those. We'll have What's in the Helmet with Adrian Musso, an opportunity for Carter to play for the first time, and Corbin his second time. Stick around on the other side of the break, another opportunity to win tickets. The first time the Kingston Frontenacs have come to one sound in a few years now due to COVID. They're here Sunday. Plenty more on the other side of the break. You're watching Attack Rap on Rogers TV. you in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. Watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll always catch your favorite team no matter where you live. Whether it's big matchups you're looking for or following your top fantasy picks, it's all here. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. All this for only $35.95 a month. Say Super Sports Pack into your voice remote to order. Hi, I'm Krista McKee of Wandering Grey Bruce. This season, we will be meeting some really interesting people. Uh, we're going to go visit Thornberry in the Clarksburg area. Just to name a few, we will be going glamping, learning about some garlic, and checking out some live edge furniture. And you can see all the little wormholes in here. And it's smooth. Watch us on Rogers TV or online. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. 
visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Zach Scribner, Adrian Musso, joined alongside Carter George, almost Carter, called you Carter, uh, Carter's gold there, and <laughs> Corbin Votary, two netminders for the Owen Sound attack. We mentioned it, it was a busy week for Owen Sound last week, three games played against Midwest Division rivals. First, the London Knights last Wednesday at the Bay Shore. Let's go to those highlights. Ewan's from behind his own neck, going to start things up for the attack. Ewan's up to center, passes it to Gore on the right wing side. He breaks into the zone, takes a hit, throws it across, they score! Back to the point, Sedley. Wrist shot, scores! But it is being his first year. Here's a chance for Sim, he scores! Following it up, the first shot blocked. Sim bangs home the second try, and the Knights needed that one as they cut the attack lead in half. Down low for Cedric Gain Dong. Hard around to Sedley at the right point. Sedley waits and shoots, scores! One by the attack, back to Nolan Seed. Seed waiting, shoots it. Nobody able to get a stick on it. Barlow does, and he scores! Knights have control. Dickinson over to Mayu. They're going to switch spots. Mayu likes to shoot. Side of the net, they score. George Diaco. Score back for Sedley. Over to Gain Dahl. Gain Dahl down low, scores! Matthew Pappas finishing it off. A power play goal makes it 5-2. to two. Protects it. Still has it. Goes to seed. Sends it across. Fantino is stopped as Barlow. Up against Bonk. Here's Gore shorthanded. What a glove save from Brett Brochu. And now Teddy Sawyer will look to come out. Up the middle. Skipping puck. Two on one. Burroughs has it to the net. Pappas. Pappas in front. He scores! To pass up to the blue line for Petrovsky. Drops for Barlow. One-timer, Petrovsky scores! Perfect placement there on the one-timer by Servak Petrovsky. Oh, and sound attack. Pick up a convincing 7-2 victory here tonight. Exactly that, Mark McKelvey. A very convincing 7-2 win over the London Knights last Wednesday here at the Bayshore. Carter, your first opportunity to step into the, uh, the OHL. You're a backup for that game. Um, I mentioned it. Convincing win. What was the message from the coaching staff before and after the game? Uh, before the game, they were like, let's get out on them early. Let's, uh, let's get some goals on the board right away. And uh, they did just that. Three goals in the first period was pretty good. So I, they did everything they asked for and got the win. Coaches were pretty pleased after the game. So, yeah. Corbin, you were part of the team last year where you guys lost nine straight to them. Now you guys are actually on a three-game winning streak if you count last season against the London <laughs> yeah, Knights. Yeah. How, how nice is it to get a win against the Knights? Yeah, it, it feels really good. You know, obviously they're a division rival. Uh, they play us hard every game, but, you know, like, you know, getting, that, getting those two wins on them early here is, you know, makes, uh, you know, it's, it makes us very happy. So, like, you know, we're doing really well against I was going to say, it could also be the difference when you go down the road closer to playoff time. You guys are doing so well against these Midwest Division teams. We'll get on to that. But in saying that, um, I know, Carter, you've only been here for three games. But uh, what's uh, your favorite rivalry for the team this year? Yeah, I, I love London. Like, um, don't, don't say it that way. You don't I love, love playing London. against there, London. There <laughs> I love playing against London. Like, yeah, they're obviously a very, like, good team there always are but you know we match up well against them this year so. and then do you have a rivalry you're looking forward to down the line heard much from guys around the team i haven't heard much no so yeah maybe i'll find one eventually but yeah. it was your first regular season game on the bench watching it and you, you participated in a few preseason games did you notice any differences in the style of play between preseason and uh the regular season i definitely found regular season was a bit faster and a lot more physical um, I felt I saw a little bit of a difference there. Uh, kind of made me a little nervous about that, but <laughs> yeah. Now, Corbin, you have a flair for designing goalie pads. Last year, you went all red with the big bear on the front, and this year, you literally went with flares or flames on the on your pads. What was what went into the design of your pads this season? Yeah, I just wanted something different. Like, uh, I wanted a white base this year, just to make me look kind of bigger. Uh, to cover a lot of more net, but you know I'm pretty fortunate to have the custom designer with Bauer 
uh, to really set me up there. Uh, you know, I leave it all up to him, and he sends me a whole bunch of designs, and you know, it's it's a pretty cool process. So now, how long how long does it take you to get adjusted to a new set of pads? Not long at all. These uh, like the pads and gloves are are pretty much broken in for you as soon as you get them. Like like I know last year uh, I practiced practiced once before I played uh, the very next day with the with that set. Now you're wearing the same helmet as last year. Do you have a uh, do you have a helmet on the on the way this year? Uh, I haven't designed one yet this year. Um, not sure what I'm going to put on it, but we'll see. Okay, hey, very cool. And now, Carter, uh, talking about flair for the dramatic, let's go back to your first OHL game against the Barry Colts. We heard this story from Coach Walters live here <laughs> on Attack Rap that you went to the bench. It was overtime solved nothing. Yeah. It's time for the shootout. And you said, don't worry, guys, I got this. A 16-year-old goaltender, and you won the game. So do you enjoy shootouts? Uh, as a kid, shootouts were always my favorite. Um, they're definitely a thing where it was like, if I got to OT, I was trying to get to a shootout because I knew I was, those were always something I was good at. So I went to the bench. I don't know, sometimes when I just get in the moment, I'll just say something. <laughs> and uh, I ended up saying, I was like, oh, get me one, and we'll, get, we'll win this game. And everyone looked at me like, are you nuts? He went perfect in the shootout. And I, and I went perfect, and they were like, wow, there's no way a 16-year-old just said that to us. Yeah. <laughs> now, does that translate to breakaways as well? Uh, kind of, yes, except breakaways are a little bit faster yeah. just because they always have back pressure on them. Usually shootouts, they could take a little bit more time. And Corbin, for you, you see the 16-year-old step into the net, loving the pressure of a shootout. Do you, first of all, let's talk about Carter in that situation. What, what do you say when you hear that on the bench? No, I love it. It just shows the, the amount of confidence he has, which is, which is really good. And then for you, shootouts, is it something that you tend to um, want, like Carter? No, I just <laughs> kind of want to get the two points. Get out of there, like. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, now let's maybe throw it to the NHL. Um, for the two of you, who's one goaltender you try to model your game after and why? We'll start with you, Carter. Ooh, I kind of got two here. I like... Sergey Bobrovsky a lot. I like him and uh, Yuzi Saros. He's uh, kind of going up on my radar here. I uh, see both of those goalies in your game a little uh, quick. I, I like Tim in fantasy, yeah. Yuzi Saros this year, so I hope he does well. <laughs> Very good. Uh, cool. Corbin? I like uh, Andre Vasilevsky. You know, he's, he's a guy that competes all the time, and his athleticism like, can, can kind of relates to my game. So. And uh, obviously, he's a very skilled, uh, skilled goalie. Being, so. a, being a southpaw, is it hard to emulate your game uh, to, a, to a goalie in the NHL? Or is it, is it just like what you see is what you try and do as well? Yeah, exactly. What you see is you just try and what you, what you try and do. So Now, uh, we'll go into Friday's highlights uh, against the Erie Otters momentarily. I kind of asked you this with the goaltender. Now, let's talk about a player. Who's one in opposing player you enjoy going up against across the league? Um, I uh, I played against Mississauga this year for my first game. Uh, Owen Beck. I've just I played with him all my life. Uh, a great buddy of mine, and you know to shut him down uh, against Mississauga uh, was good. So. And Carter, you haven't obviously got any game action. Who's a player on the team that that uh, you really enjoy going up against, even if it's in practice? Ooh, I really like Danny Gore. He uh, he. Uh, he put the puck in the net, and he's pretty funny when he does it, too, and he, he lets me know. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned it. Uh, Owen Sound's first trip to the Erie Insurance Arena. First, let's see those highlights from Friday night. The defensive end into the neutral zone for Pappas. Nearly getting in the way was George Alboim. Up against the near board, shot back in. Second opportunity, and now they score. Too many rebounds in front. And the Owen Sound attack able to go on top as Denny Gore is in the right place at the right time. Central Ice, it goes back to the defensive end with 3.20 to go in the first period. Owen Sound leading 1-0. Artichuk trying to change it, and he does! Tail Artichuk, how's that for your first of the season? Messier throwing a check to Denny Gore. He gets in the way, and that was a great defensive job done by Messier. Gave that one right back up, and he'll have to go back on the defensive. Cameron Lowe in after it. Lowe inside of the wide corner. Taken back by the attack. Sedley couldn't shoot it. Taken back up, loose, and they score. Cedric Gendo able to just slip that one past Downey. Fantino lost that puck along the near wall. Got it back to the blue line for Sam Sedley. 
Sedley outside of the right circle for Gore. Back in the high slot. Goes wide. Finds its way to the near wall. Gore sends it to the blue line. 35 seconds left to go on the kill. Gore with it. Shooting that one in. Downey and they score. Power play goal. Matthew Pappas. Left circle draw. Bruce McDonald under center. McDonald. Below the goal line, it'll go. And this one finding its way to the near wall. Cool a call. Might have got away with a trip down there. Two on one for the attack, and they score. Denny Gore, second of the game. Owens back behind. Three minutes left to go. Erie down by three. Racing into the offensive end. Gavin Bryant in front, and he scores. Highlight real goal for Gavin Bryant. And a four-goal lead for the Owen Sound attack. Defeated against Midwest Division uh, opponents. A 5-1 to one win over the Uri Otters Friday night. Corbin, I thought Nick was really outstanding in that game, especially I think shots in the first period, 13-4, to four, somewhere in that ballpark uh, for the Uri Otters. What did you see from the OA Friday night? Yeah, uh, you know, Nick's every night's given us uh, a chance to win. And, um, you know, I, I thought he was really calm that night. And, no, he, he played uh, like positionally well, and he's always there in front of the puck, and, and he competed. So. Now we talked about him a little bit earlier in the show, and you just mentioned him not not too long ago. The menace, and Denny uh, scored two goals and had an assist in that one. Is it nice to see that the offense is finally clicking with with that first line of Denny, Ethan, and Matthew Pappas, and then you got Sedley Gain now with. Uh, Colby Barlow and uh, Servak Petrovsky. The first two lines are finally going. Yeah, no, it's great, uh, great to see that momentum, and we just try to bring that, uh, you know, to every game. So uh, we do have a trivia winner uh, for our first set of tickets. Roger Reed, you'll be going to Saturday night's game versus the Guelph Storm. First career win versus the Saginaw Spirit. We can finally talk about it there. Uh, what do you remember um, once again about that win over Saginaw? Your first ever career win in the Ontario Hockey League. Yeah, I just remember the you know the final buzzer going off and you <laughs> when know, they all, finally, when they all finally getting that, that yeah. win. So you know it felt it felt amazing and it's something I'll always remember. Uh, before we go now to Saturday's highlights, Adrian, let's throw out trivia question number two. You came up with this one. Yeah, so trivia question number two is what which two Owen Sound Attack captains were traded for each other? So this is uh, for tickets to October 30th against the Kingston Frontenacs. I don't think Shane Wright will be in the lineup. Might be unfortunate for Owen Sound fans. I haven't got to see him here in the past few years, but Kingston making their way to the Big Shore. He hasn't got sent down yet, has he? No, he's not there, but uh, there's a goalie that plays for the Kingston mm. Frontenacs right now, Ivan Jigalov, who is a man among boys right now. It has a great goals against average. I believe it's under two. Yep. And his GAA is over 930, which is very, very impressive. They have a lot of talent on that team for the Kingston Frontenacs. The, the own sound attack will be in tough, but I think they're ready for the challenge. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Zhigalov did earn OHL goaltender of the week a few weeks, I do believe. Mention it. Let's go to the, uh, the third and final set of highlights. Saturday night versus the Erie Otters. Chase back in for Erie as Archim Kulikov. Back to the blue line, face off one, stepping up and they score. Four on four goal, Cal Owens with the shot. Owen looking for it, but Sam Sedley's got it. Out of the zone it'll come. Down the ice, Marshall Nichols will come slightly out of his net to get that one. Kairou, lead feed to nobody. Spencer Sobel will take it on his own accord. Soba shot and he scores! Puck stuck in the air. Here's Saganuk entering in. Saganuk, top of the right circle, shooting. Rebound for set, and he scores! Off the pads of Votary, the rebound put home. Brett Brissett gives the Otters their first lead of the night. It's off right circle. It'll depend on how it finishes here. But Erie leading in shots, 30 to 24, and in a 2-1 lead. Big shot off the face-off, they score! Face-off win, Kyrou with the shot, Otters up by a pair! Nolan Seed looking to break out. He'll flutter puck this one forward, Kyrou falls on top of the puck, right side circle opportunity, Marshall Nichols diving out of the net to stop that Dropping one. their first contest to a Midwest Division opponent, 
this year, um, a loss against the Erie Otters. So the win streak snapped up four games and the first loss to a Midwest opponent. Uh, Corbin, what do you think the difference was uh, between Friday night's win and Saturday's loss? Yeah, I think it was just our physical pres presence. They just, uh, I feel like they just outworked us. You know, uh, you know, every, every like all over the ice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we just got to learn how to play with, uh, like with uh, with them playing hard on us. So, um, now you faced some adversity in that game. It's not shown in the highlight pack. Uh, for fans that didn't get to watch it, you were speared, I think, in the first or second period, and it led to a four-minute power play for the team. First off, you're doing okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's uh, the very first important part. Is this maybe a new rivalry? The, both games, you mentioned it, pretty trippy affairs. Maybe a new rivalry we can look forward to this year? Yeah. No, I think uh, it'll be a great time, like great game next time we see them. Uh, obviously, with it being a close game and, you know, it's not getting the outcome we wanted, but it'll definitely be a great game next time we see them. Now, in that same sequence, Carter, he gets speared. They're reviewing for a, if it goes from a two to four, inevitably it was a four minute double minor for spearing. You're stretching on the ice. <laughs> Are you getting a little nervous that you have to go in for your first OHL game? Um, I may have taken a deep breath and went, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> uh, it may have stressed me out a little bit. I was pretty nervous thinking, oh my God, I could actually go in right now. <laughs> but, now um, we, we uh, talked about this with Nolan and Colby last week. First road trip of the season lengthy road trip who won rookie karaoke uh you know we didn't do rookie karaoke we just did uh you know some questions like you know like your favorite uh like favorite guy on the team and stuff like that and who has, who has the best chirps and stuff like that so you know it that's what we did but you know uh Terrace, yeah, had some pretty fun funny answers I believe we have Antonio and Tom Slot Brennan I believe in a few weeks so look forward to that episode Adrian it's your favorite time of the evening. It's not my favorite time. It's everybody's favorite time. It's time for What's in the Helmet, Gray County's favorite game show on a Tuesday night, voted by me and Zach. <laughs> so, guys, this is pretty simple. I'm going to pull a question or a statement out of here, and you have to say the th whatever comes to your mind first. Okay. And because you're the vet, you get to go first, so All you right. get a little time to prepare as a rookie. All right? First question. Who's the smartest player on the team? Uh, Gavin Bright. Right. Uh, Teddy Sawyer. Oh, some new, ones. Some new answers. I like Did, that. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, the D don't get a lot of love on this show. I don't know why. Except but for Sam Sedley and his <laughs> the best hands on the yeah, team. We'll get to, that, we'll get to that in a little bit. But I like that answer as Teddy answer. Sawyer. Yeah. He's very smart defensively and gets underrated. Uh, favorite hockey memory to date? Uh, winning back-to-back uh, -back OMHA championships in minor hockey. Not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably my first OHL win, preseason win. Preseason win. Very cool. Next one. If you had the... Now, I have to say, Corbin, you've been voted for this one for a lot, and that's a compliment to you. If you've left for the weekend and you, one of your players had to house it, who would it be? Uh, like it would definitely be Gavin Bryant again as well. I keep talking to my head, but he's yeah, just very responsible. Uh, I gotta go with Burroughs. He's a dad. <laughs> he's a dad. <laughs> he's a dad. <laughs> He'll keep care. So Corbin, you're voted for that, um, and impressive. What do you think of the guys giving you their house for the weekend? I like that. Uh, I don't know. Thanks, thanks a lot of me. So <laughs> so Seti Gain, no. Caleb Lawrence and Petro all in one episode all said Corbin Votary. They trust you with their houses. They're nice. going out golfing for the weekend. You're taking care of the house. Sweet. Now, now in that same breath, who is the one guy you do not want in your house for the weekend all alone? I am not leaving my house to Julian Fantino. <laughs> I would have to agree with Corbin there. <laughs> <laughs> Last week it was Chafer simply because there would be too many skip the dishes all over the <laughs> yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next question. Ideal golf foursome. Do you golf, first of all? Yep. No, uh, I think my ideal uh, golf force would be Seti, like Gwyndon, uh, Madden Steen, and, and Cal Ewins. Do you have a golf foursome outside of hockey? Outside of hockey? Outside of the team. Like I do with my buddies, yeah. But no, like, no, like, like, like ideal, like you can pick anybody in the world. Anybody in the world. 
I don't know, probably Henrik Lundqvist. He was my favorite goalie growing up. Um, oh, I don't know, like, who's the guy that runs Tesla there? He's a pretty oh, smart Elon, dude. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. You're riding in style to the golf I don't course. know, we got to learn some tricks there. But <laughs> I don't know, Wayne Gretzky is just an ideal hockey player. Yeah. So. Um, I would say Tejas Jordan. I hear he's pretty damn good at golf. <laughs> um, I would definitely put him, him in there if there's money on the line. Um, I don't know, I'd probably throw in Thomas Chafe, he's a pretty funny guy, and same with Sam Sadley. The guy in ideal golf foursome, just uh, anybody. Celebrities? Uh, I would say Spent Chicklets. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah. Biz and Wit, and probably MJ. MJ in there, not bad. Who has, and this is a great question for you two goalies. Mm -hmm. Who has the best shot on the team? And these, Zach, there's I have not to, one answer week after week. There's, no, there's but a surprise I answer. have to say that whoever the answer they come up with has to have, has to have the, the best shot on, the shot on the team. They have to face it day in day. Out. Yeah, like obviously Colby Barlow, his uh, his one timers and, and quick release, it's it's great. So probably him. For me, I struggle with a lot. Is Caleb Lawrence? He's Sticks so long, he just puts a puck, he moves a puck so much, and it's just like a quick release. It's a tough shot to stop on a stick that long. The angle moves so much, yeah. and it's very tough. So, uh, Quincy Red Devil himself, Braden Rogers, nominated for that answer as well. Yep, no, he's uh, obviously he's a younger guy, but I think uh, as he gets older and, and gets bigger, he's gonna have a, a cannon of a shot. Next one, only two questions left. Player you wouldn't want to be stuck in a car with for more than two hours? Uh, probably Julian Van <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with Corbin there on that one again. Uh, yeah, he was, for fans that don't remember last year, Julian was voted the person that talks the most on the team, so. <laughs> we have him on in a few weeks as well, I believe, so it'll be interesting to hear Tino's <laughs> side of this, saying who don't you want to be stuck in a car with? He's facing the, Everyone going to be calling them out. And then uh, the last question, who has the best hands on the team? Um, I think Seti, uh, again, all has the best hands. He's just, you know, obviously drafting the NHL, a skill guy, so. That's a tough question. There's a lot of guys. I'm going to go with Denny Kaur. He's got some pretty good hands. Very good. We broke the mold of the Sam yeah. Sedley train on best hands of the, on the team. That does it for another episode of What's in the Hat. Zach has your next question. So following the conclusion of Sunday's game, the skate with the fans, I believe, is back. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to skate alongside some of your favorite players, maybe get some autographs from some of those NHL drafted prospects. Uh, for the two of you, are there any fan interactions that stick out so far uh, in your time in Owen Sound? Yeah, no, I... It's always cool just seeing someone with your jersey on. It's, you know, it really means a lot just to know that someone's someone's cheering for you individually, and you know, it's yeah, it's just really cool. Uh, for me, is I think it's super cool when a little kid comes up to you and asks for your autograph. I feel like, and you sign their jersey or whatever, and it means the world to them. I I feel like that's a pretty special moment. Now another question for yourself, Carter. I'm not sure between Thunder Bay and Toronto. Is this your first time billeting with someone? Yes, it is. This is the first time I've built it ever in my life. Are you with anyone on the team right now? Uh, right now I'm with Taos Jordan and Teddy Sawyer. Two defensemen. <laughs> what, uh, what do you make of the building experience so far? Uh, I like it. Away from home, away from parents. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, I think. Hey, I think uh, mom and dad are watching the episode, though. Well, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, with saying that, do you miss, like, it's your first time, you're 16 years old, you're in grade 11. Do you miss being at home uh, with the with the boys and with your mom and dad there. Do you have any siblings uh, at home as well? I do have a sister. Uh, me and her are pretty close, I'd say. Um, but it's obviously a little different because usually if, if you're around here, you could drive like two hours, go back home, but a 16 hour drive is pretty, <laughs> pretty rough. So uh, it's a little hard not being able to go home, but you got FaceTime and Snapchat. You mm -hmm. could just talk to them that way. So you still stay in contact with them. There's a good question you need to add into uh, what's in the helmet. Are you guys more of an Insta person or a Snap? Snapchat probably. Snap. Yeah, I use both equally, yeah. I think. TikTok's taken over the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. world now as well. Zach, you're way younger than I am, so uh, that's your realm. I'm um, stay away from that. Now, uh, we only have about three or four minutes left. What's, uh, especially for yourself, Carter, fans getting to uh, meet you for the first time, what's a fun fact that they may not know about you? 
<laughs> this is a tough one. Um, I don't know. I like to say I'm six foot, and some people don't believe it, so I like to say that's a fun fact because I actually am six foot. <laughs> I believe it. I, I was right beside you as you walked into the studio today. I was surprised at both your guys' height. you got to be close to 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah, I like to say I'm 6'3". That's a fun fact for me as well. <laughs> uh, did you guys add or lose any weight over the summer preparing for a big year? I think I probably put on close to 10 to 5 to 10 pounds probably. Corbin? Yeah, I think uh, I just maintain weight over the summer. I think I'm at a reasonable good spot. Now, Corbin, this is your first year playing hockey that you're not in school. How has that been adjustment-wise? I'm sure you go to breakfast club with the boys. Yep, and uh, and for breakfast club every morning. Um, you know, just you know, there's a lot more time to really, like, really focus on on the hockey side of things. Although I do want to keep, uh, you know, be in school. That's just you know, it keeps my mind busy. And you know, for those nights that I'm not doing anything, I have something to do. So I'll probably be looking to add a course here soon. So you're not taking any courses right now. What what line of do you plan on going into? Uh, hopefully university at some point. Um, you know, sports management side of things. I think. Nice. Now cool. uh, that's what I took in my undergrad. So. Nice. Taking your mind off hockey and your spare time. What are some uh, some fun things that you guys do? Uh, just get your mind off hockey. Do some stuff for fun. Yeah, we we play a lot of poker uh, with the guys. Mm -hmm. So nice. that's always really fun. And Carter for yourself? Yeah, usually just hanging out with some of the teammates is always fun. Get to go out wherever and just hang out. It's uh, something to get hockey off your mind. But. Now, uh, final questions for the both of you. We can kind of see it on the camera there. You have a very nice tattoo that really stands out. What's, uh, what's the meaning behind it? Yeah, I just recently got this in the, in the summer. Uh, basically, it has uh, all my, like my parents' birthdays and my brother. So. And yourself, uh, your first time joining, uh, going on attack rap message that you have for mom and dad back home watching you on the tack rap for the first time <laughs> thanks for everything uh love you guys and uh yeah couldn't be here without you guys well we're uh we're running out of time only about 30 seconds left so we want to thank you guys adrian it was another fun episode carter welcome dolan sound corbin good to see you guys again yep thanks for having us thank you very much two goalies of the Owen sound attack and carter george and corbin votary they'll be in action Saturday versus the Guelph Storm, Sunday versus Kingston Frontenacs. You can catch both those games on Rogers TV. Up with until then, we want to say thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you at the rink and take care. You're watching Attack Rap on Rogers TV. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together we're stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll always catch your favorite team no matter where you live. Whether it's big matchups you're looking for or following your top fantasy picks, it's all here.